Good morning, YouTube. Wake up, sleepy people. <coughs> I hope everything's off till five. Started your house this morning. Oh, I don't feel like doing nothing today. Oh, wait a minute. Mm, there's some incentive right there. Okay. Well, we are going to do something today. Oh, uh, in fact, we're going to go work on a uh, welding machine. Man says he got bad gas in. Hmm? We're going to stay. Let's go see what it's going to cost us, man. I got a feeling. So if this is more than a hundred bucks, he ain't gonna want it worked on. Well, guess what? It costs him more than a hundred bucks for me to put up in his yard. Oh, I need some sunglasses. Honestly, I've been out to this man's house before and I can't believe he called me back. I don't really care for this man. And uh, I had gotten over to his house and he had this mule and it was all tore apart. And uh, I told him I wasn't going to work on it. And, that, and that's what I am. He got some all tore apart. I ain't working on it. You ain't gonna be working on the brakes while I'm working on the carburetor, or you ain't gonna be working on the carburetor while I work on the brakes. Because when I get done with what I'm doing, I'm fixing testing, and testing it includes driving it, and I ain't putting. A machine back together that you tore apart. That's a fact, Jack. <sighs> what I want to know is how do people living in government apartments afford 
ATVs and kayaks and stuff like that. I mean, for real. So anyway, we are going over here. He, I think he said it was a Kohler engine on a welding machine. Let's just go see what kind of welding machine he's got here. Uh, I won't be responsible for the welding machine part of it. That'll be clear before I get started. Uh, he will be paying for the removal and replacement of the carburetor and the cleaning of the carburetor in any parts. So depending on how much stuff I got to take off and how, how long it takes me to remove and replace this carburetor is what it's going to cost. I mean, it's just, it's just a fact, you know, something I ain't used to working on. Um, I charge for removal and replacement on everything else that I work on, but usually depending on what it is, uh, Removal and replacement somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour, usually. Um, yeah, I charge uh, for 45 minutes. I charge for 30 minutes. I charge for 15 minutes. I uh, try to give a reasonable flat rate time on removal and replacement. A lot of times it takes me longer than what I give. But that's just, that's me. I don't have any flat rate books to go by, but that's what I go by. If I look at it and I say, well, it shouldn't take about a half hour to do, well, that's what I charge. Uh, so anyway, guys, I'm gonna let y'all go. And I'm gonna go over here and get started on my day. God bless you, have a beautiful day. Always make sure to get photos of the unit and photos of the serial number and VIN numbers. So for just such occasions and uh, keep them stored. Email them to yourself or store them in the cloud. Now, almost as if he knew that I was just fixing to call him and tell him that I was going to be over the next day to install the parts and clean his carburetor. He gives me, a, he sends me a text message telling me not to worry about coming out. I have enclosed the whole text strand. And you can see here that he does not want to pay for my time. He does not want to pay for the parts or for the the uh, restocking fee of the parts. So at that point right there, uh, I told him how much it was going to cost and that I could be I would be expecting a check in the mail. Well, two weeks went by. I'd get and re receive a check, so I went down and had photocopies of the the invoice made i made six of them i come home and on the the sixth one i made a, a handwritten note about how uh i would be proceeding with uh, a mechanic's lien for the the money that he owes me and then I numbered the 
the invoices and I put them in a pile on my, my desk and mailed the first one and I got no response. Then I waited a month and I sent the second one. This time I got a response and he told me that the check was already in the mail. I had not received the check. So of course I checked my mailbox every day. And then the following day, after having that conversation with him, I received his check. Almost three months later, now, I would have proceeded with the mechanic lien. Yes, over $75, I would have, because this gentleman, uh, I mean, he put me out. He put me out in a big way, and uh, I, had just, I had made the decision that, that I wasn't going to be taken advantage of, and that uh, the only way to not be taken advantage of in the future was to not be taken advantage of in the past. So whenever you run across these kind of problems, you have to take care of them. And that is your only means of taking care of them. And that's in a peaceful way. And by, if you have to, you get the, the law of small claims court and your justice of the peace involved. And they will work with you to bring about a fair judgment and sometimes it takes getting tough to get small things done and it's sad it really is sad and this is why I really did not want to go out there in the beginning and because I'm a pretty fair judge of people and I had him judged right off the bat y'all have a great day and uh, beware